Hey guys, what's up? It's Iflin here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can farm Nidus Prime, the Strum Prime, and the Magnus Prime really efficiently. Now, these Prime items came out about five or six hours ago, and I've already got all of my stuff sitting crafting here in the foundry. So here's the Nidus Prime, here is the Magnus Prime, and also here is the Strum Prime. It was a pretty easy farm for me, but that's simply because... The relics I got really lucky with. They were dropping like candy uh, on the places that I was farming for them. And on top of that, I came in prepared because I had a lot of void traces already saved up. So I had basically, I think I had 1300 whenever I came into this. So it was really easy. Void traces are really important for this farm because a lot of the Nidus parts are actually rare drops. So what I want you guys to do, come over to your codex, go to the universe tab go to relics and arcanes and type in the name of the item that you want to farm up so in this case it is nidus and you can see all of the relics that you want to get to start farming up uh nidus or the magnus or the strun or whatever the case may be now for this axie a14 relic i was doing the disruption on lua and it was dropping like candy for me there now the great thing about disruption is the faster you kill the demolists which are the enemies that pulse red and are kind of tanky the faster you kill them, the faster the rotations go around. So that's why I was able to get a lot of Axie A14 relics from there. Um, but if you don't want to do that, what you can do is you can do a tier 3 interception. And then on rotations B and C, you have a 14.29% chance uh, to get these Axie A14 relics. So all of the drop locations are listed down here. So you can just, you know, go to any of these areas and get it. But like I said, tier free interception. So basically any interception mission, which is listed here, is going to get you a lot. And then disruption missions, because you can do them so quickly, you know, you're going to get a lot from those as well. You can also do, I believe, the Plague Star bounties and get a few Nidus uh, relics from there. But I haven't actually went into Plague Star uh, this time around yet. So I couldn't uh, tell you like how buggy or how efficient it is this time around so um yeah just because i haven't played it like i'm not gonna rule it out or anything i'm just saying like i haven't experienced how commonly the uh or how common the relics are within that game would you know so moving on from that we have the neo n16 relic now this i did the uranus disruption because on rotation b and c you've got a chance to get it rotation b it's a 14.29 percent drop and then the rotation C is 13.56. This dropped like candy as well. It was really easy to get. The other thing is, with these relics, whenever you're cracking them, try to crack them in missions, which also drop the relics, right? Now, that's something that, you know, a lot of, like, experienced Warframe players will do. They'll open up the relics in missions, which drop those same relics. So then, like, let's say you open it and you don't get the thing you want you might also get the same relic as a reward at the end of the mission so that you can just run it again and hopefully get the part the, uh the next time around the other thing is make sure to be running it with a group of people who are dedicated to the nidus farm right so if you all use uh, a relic one at a time right so let's say one run i would use a nidus prime relic then the next run somebody else would use the nidus prime relic and we all use like different relics um that way it's going to stop you from getting duplicates because you don't want to end up getting uh let's say two nidus prime blueprints from the run run and then one goes to waste if that makes any sense so run relics one by one in every single run and then that way you maximize efficiency getting uh, the sets and stuff like that. If you want to farm multiple sets of Nidus and Magnus and stuff like that. It's more important whenever it comes to vaulted things. Like Atlas was the frame that got vaulted uh, prior to Nidus being released, right? So if you've got like Atlas, Tekka, or Death Cube relics laying around, you might want to like focus farm them with a group of people. So um, because Nidus relics are going to be around for a long time because he's new, doesn't matter too much because we're eventually going to have a massive backlog of these relics but just keep that in mind whenever it comes to farming um so yeah the neo n16 uranus disruption rotations b and c you can do said the disruption luya disruption tier 2 interceptions all that they're good stuff everything is listed down here the meso relic so this is your nidus prime systems you can get this from tier 2 defense missions uranus disruption as well or said the disruption to and maybe tier three defense those missions all have a 14 percent jump uh, drop chance for the mesa relics so i'd recommend picking one of those and then for the lift relic which is lift n7 tier one spy missions i did those really 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 fast i was able to get a bunch of these relics from there so that's just the earth spy mission or you could also do uh, Mars Disruption, and then that's rotations A and B. You've got a 14.29% chance to drop. 
Now, while you're farming the Nidus relics, you're probably also going to pick up relics for the Magnus and also relics for the Strun, right? So for the Magnus, we've got free relics. We've got the Axie M2, which is for the Barrel, the Meso B6, which is for the Blueprint, and the Neo T5, which is for the Receiver, the Strun. We've got Axie I2, which is for the Receiver, Lift T7, which is for the Barrel. We've got Meso S10, which is for the blueprint, and then Neo N17, which is for the stock. Now, all of these relics, they essentially drop from the same place as the Nidus relics, right? So as long as you're running the missions to get the Nidus relics, you're going to get these relics alongside those Nidus relics. So it's going to be really efficient. And uh, again, whenever you're opening up your relics, if you're running missions which drop these specific relics that you need, well, then you're going to be getting hopefully uh relics in return whenever you're cracking them open and maybe not getting the things that you want right and the other thing that you guys can keep in mind if you like haven't logged in yet you can go to your syndicates and you can trade your syndicate standing or medallions for relic packs right so if you have syndicate medallions laying around you can go and trade your medallions uh, at the vendor in the relay to get some more standing to get relic packs if you don't have any standing but if you've got your standing cap then just go ahead and spend all of your standing on opening up these relics because it's just an easy way to get some of the relics you know it's basically free relics so you can get that from all of your syndicates every single syndicate has a uh, relic pack offering so that is quite easy and then last but definitely not least because this is probably like one of the the best ways to get relics nowadays is uh teshin so that's your steel path stuff so if you guys didn't know you can farm steel essence from the steel path which is the quote-unquote end game game mode of warframe where enemies levels are increased by 100 they have more armor they have more health and stuff like that uh you can farm steel essence which is just like a, a currency and then we can fast travel to teshin on the relay and we head up to him and he is actually going to sell us relic packs for 15 steel essence so i did that got a bunch of uh, relic packs that way and it was great so that is basically it whenever it comes to farming up you know relic packs and just relics in general for pretty much any prime frame right like a lot of these uh the drop locations are pretty much the same every single prime release it's just people like uh they google you know how do i get nidus prime out there type of thing and uh, it's worth making a video to let people know hey all you have to do is jump into your codex type in the name of the prime frame or prime weapon that you want and it shows you all the drop locations and then uh you know doing missions to open your relics which also drop the relics right that's how you be efficient with it and uh you know just just get a lot of relics open because that's what it comes down to make sure to play frames that are really quick and they're knocked down immune so for me i was running goss because his two makes him knocked down immune and i was pairing that with the with the kuva czar right so this selects the tp to my arsenal so this is the goss build that i was running right this just allowed me the zoom free stuff uh you don't need prime sure fit it on here because your two makes you knocked down immune like i said uh, and this is just a really for the beginner friendly build right um adaptations on there so you don't take a lot of damage vitality's on there for more health lightning dash you can replace with mobilize if you don't have it uh auger message for duration it's basically a full duration build because that is what uh goss's abilities more or less scale with arcane strike for attack speed arcane velocity i would swap that off for arcane energize if you've got it uh if not don't worry too much about it as long as you have the energizing dash you should be good to go and then for my kuva czar this is the Kuva Zar build that I've been running. Of course, you have to swap out the Prime Bean mod for whatever faction it is that you're going up against. Um, for Relic content, this honestly doesn't matter too much. You could just throw another Elemental mod in here and that would be totally fine. Prime Firestorm, very important because this actually increases the radius of the explosion, right? So you're able to just spam this at your feet and kill a ton of enemies really, really, really fast. And it's just amazing. Vigilante Supply is also very important because you get more ammo pickups from this, which just allows you to keep on spamming the Kuva Zar or the Kuva Brahma at your feet, killing everything and just making these missions go as fast as possible. So I recommend doing the likes of like capture missions, disruption missions, stuff like that, because they go quite fast. And that's pretty much it. That is all you really need to know whenever it comes to farming uh, Nidus Prime, Magnus Prime and the Strum Prime. So if you guys liked the video, hit that like button below if you want to see more Warframe content from me. Hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.